friend of me it feel like me to lift with a fire in a John Paul and what a hide it my friend of me it done if this what me for me early then I feel go fled what a hide it my friend of me it feel like me to lift with a fire in a John Paul and what a hide it my friend of me it done if you like me like me you to eat then I feel go what is that guy Mr. Sally tell him to me want 50 pounds of the Cali want 20 pounds for go get to this Mali next 20 pounds for the big and the rally next 10 pounds of the go get to me Charlie I tell me ready if you go burn down Kelly Put an head of fire, me say burn them Udali Man a hug up and say he'll die to Bali Man is man a man a hala play a man the poly Rub up and a hug up and a dilly young dolly Kill the whole of them and push them out one to Charlie Can't touch me, it's on them, can't touch me Bali Well, it's not too much Bali But I will Depend on me, it's my life Tanning is skin cells in trauma Trying to protect themselves from cancer But one damaged cell can start a melanoma growing and just one millimeter deep, it can get into your bloodstream and spread. So even if a melanoma is cut out, the cancer can reappear months or years later, often in your lung, liver, or brain. And you haven't even started to burn yet. There's nothing healthy about a tan. Who gets skin cancer? Skin cancer develops in people of all colors, from the palest to the darkest. However, skin cancer is most likely to occur in those who have fair skin, light colored eyes, blonde or red hair, a tendency to burn or freckles when exposed to the sun, and a history of sun exposure. Anyone with a family history of skin cancer also has an increased risk of developing skin cancer. In dark skin individuals, melanoma most often develops on non-sun exposed areas such as the foot, underneath nails, and on the mucous membranes of the mouth nasal passages or genitals. Those with fair skin also can have melanoma develop in these areas. Um, this is this is black awareness. I would just like to add in to say that um if if, if um dark skinned people get melanoma on areas of the body where it's not sun exposed, that contradicts the whole fact that people get sun cancer because if sun exposes if if, if you're outside and the sun it, is exposing on your skin technically you're getting it from the sun hitting your skin so how can somebody of dark color get melanoma on areas where the sun haven't been exposed and I gotta also make another point the ho another point is is that if dark people could get it that means everybody on the continent of Africa should have been dead millions of years ago you know there's no records of sunblock no, re no hieroglyphics nothing you know, so that that's just their way of trying to put us in their same predicament. You know, if you know, if dogs get it, you know, everybody in Africa should have disappeared, man. That's like I said. <laughs> Tonight, sun safety. Even though it seems like the sun has been hibernating this summer, it doesn't mean you can stop protecting your skin from the sun's harmful rays. New at 5.30, Eyewitness News meteorologist Tita Dos Santo talks to an expert about how to keep your skin safe. We've all probably had one at one time or another. Sunburns can be pretty painful. Now that we've got some sunshine, finally, it's time to be sun smart to prevent sunburns and potentially skin cancer. The sunny weather has returned and so has the outdoor fun. Lincoln Woods is now busy with swimmers and sunbathers. It's actually in some ways been ideal for sun smart. Dr. Jeffrey Borkin, chief physician of family medicine at Memorial Hospital, says he hasn't seen many cases of sunburn this year, attributing that to the cloudy and wet weather. But he says that with this sun, we have to remember to take a number of precautions when outside. First thing is protective clothing. Get a wide-rimmed hat, put on a shirt, some pants. Number two is before you go out, put the sunscreen on 15 to 30 minutes beforehand, at least at SP. F of 15. Dr. Borkin also said that we should avoid being in the sun between 11 and 2. That's when the sun is the most dangerous and sunburns are more prevalent. Finding alternate activities for children during this time is also wise. 
still, sunburns are inevitable. You get red or a little bit of sunburn, uh, take it easy the next day. Second thing you can do is to apply just a lotion to your skin. Um, and if it's painful, you can take an aspirin or uh, an ibuprofen. If the burn begins to blister or bleed, it's time to seek medical attention. But simple steps when outside in the sun can help you avoid that trip to the doctor. And Dr. Borkin also says that if you have any features on your skin that are changing size or color, that's another reason to visit the doctor. Reporting live from the Pinpoint Doppler 12 Weather Yard, I'm TJ Del Santo, Eyewitness News. Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Schultz. And welcome to Durham TV. Sunburns, they just happen. They happen to you, they happen to me. Despite our best efforts, it's not the end of the world, but they just happen. So what can we do to make our skin feel better and recover faster from sunburns? First and most important, not only get out of the sun, obviously, but go indoors because any place outside, you're still going to be hit by the reflected rays, the reflected burning rays of the sun that come off sand, water, the beach, walls. And if you can't get indoors, then at least try to get into your car because you won't get burned through the glass in the car. So you have a sunburn. Is it a regular, red, irritated, annoying sunburn, which is a first degree burn? Or do you have a second degree burn, which means you have blisters? Most of us get regular sunburns, so let's talk about first degree sunburns first. For relief from that burning, gnawing sensation, aspirin is a wonderful drug, and if you can't take aspirin, then take a non steroidal like Aleve or Advil. Secondly, use milk and water compresses topically on the skin, which goes a long way towards relieving that really annoying, burning sensation. The evaporation of the milk and water causes a cooling sensation, and the protein in the milk buffers that irritated skin and makes it feel much better. Apply cortisone ointments three or four times a day. Ointments, not creams, because the ointments, while they're a little bit thicker and they come in a Vaseline base, a little bit messier, but they prevent a chilly sensation and they work much better. If the sunburn is over a widespread area of your body, then you probably want to take a bath, not a shower. The pressure of the shower water hurts. So in a bath, use cool or lukewarm water, not ice cold water. And lastly, afterwards, pat your skin dry. Don't rub it dry, just pat it dry. Aloe vera is very good for burns and will also help your skin feel better. Lastly, avoid topical anesthetics like benzocaine, lanocaine, lidocaine. Also avoid the topical antihistamines. Benadryl cream also can create irritation like the topical anesthetics. But what happens if your sunburn is more than just red, irritated skin? What if it starts to get some fluid in it and you actually get blisters? Then you have a second degree burn. And besides doing all the things we just discussed for your first degree burn, the most important thing for a second degree burn, do not pop the blisters because that's the way they get infected. Instead, treat them with topical compresses. This time, instead of milk and water, get Burroughs solution from the pharmacy, available without a prescription, and then apply a topical antibiotic ointment like bacitracin or polysporin after the compresses. There comes a certain point though where your sunburn may require medical attention. So if you have a fever of over 101, if you have chills, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, or if your sunburn is actually getting worse after the first 12 hours, these are all signs that you need medical attention. So while I hope it doesn't happen to you and I hope you don't get a sunburn, now you know how to take care of it and how to feel more.
More than 2 million cases of skin cancer will be diagnosed this year, and that's just in the United States. Most Americans will have one of the following skin cancers. Bay cell cell, squamous cell, and melanola. Most people get skin cancer from too much sun or tanning beds. Research shows that indoor tanning, tanning beds, sun lamps all increase a person's risk of getting melanoma by 75%. Well, some state lawmakers will also consider a piece of legislation cracking down on tanning salons. A bill up for debate by the Senate Health and Human Services Committee would bar anyone from under 18 from using tanning booths.